Hello, we're here at the University of New South Wales. I'm Norman Wilber, and we're doing question 24 in chapter 2, chapter on vector geometry. This question involves both the dot product and the cross product between vectors, and actually identifies an important uh, combination of three different vectors. So we have three vectors A, B, and C, with coordinates A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and C1, C2, C3. And the problem is to show that the quantity A dot B cross C can be written in the form of a determinant. So here's a three by three matrix of entries of the three vectors. And these bars here is another way of saying determinant. So it's the determinant of that matrix. So as, as motivation for this, I think I'd like to just uh, inform you that if you have three-dimensional space and you have three vectors A, B, and C, let me draw them like this, there's A and perhaps B, and together let's say that those form a, a little parallelogram like this, and then we have a third vector, say C, so here we have uh, A, B, and C, then the meaning of this triple product, it's sometimes called, is that it's the volume of the box or parallelopiped, official name, formed by the three vectors A, B, and C. So if you have three vectors in space, then using sides, which are parallel to those three vectors, you can form a box. It's like a cube, but not at right angles and not necessarily all equal sides. It's like a cube that's been distorted so that the sides are in these three specified directions. And then the issue is, what is the volume of such an object? It's a very natural and important thing to be able to compute in three-dimensional geometry, and it turns out that this is exactly the volume of such a parallel pipe. So this particular combination has an important geometrical significance, so it's a, a good thing to remember. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Well, one way of doing it, perhaps the simplest, is just to expand things out. All right, so let's have a look at what a dot b cross c uh, is. So A is the vector. Well, I'll write in column vector A1, A2, A3. And I'll write uh, B cross C as the cross product of B1, B2, B3 and C1, C2, C3. So we have the vector A and we're dotting it with the cross product between vector B and vector C. Okay, so we know what the cross product is. So I'm going to write the vector A again, and we're going to substitute the cross product here, and that is B2C3 minus B3C2, and then the subsequent entries are obtained from this one by rotating indices. 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 1. So 3 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 3. And then the next one, again, rotate the indices. 3 goes to 1, two, 1 goes to 2. And so we have minus B2, C1. Okay, now how do we find that dot product? Well, it's A1 times B2, C3 minus B3, C2, plus A2, times B3, C1, minus B1, C3, plus A3 times B1, C2, minus B2, C1. So there are all together six terms in this expansion, A1, B2, C3, minus A1, B3, C2, plus A2, B3, C1, 
minus A2B1C3 plus A3B1C2 minus A3B2C1. And I hope you remember that when you expand a determinant like this of a 3x3 three three matrix, you're also getting six terms. In fact, you're getting the six possible products formed by taking three entries of the matrix, one from each row and each column. So for example, A1, B2, C3 corresponds to the product of this entry, this entry, and this entry. Minus A1, B3, C2. So that's the product of uh, A1 together with B3 and C2. So that's another combination, taking one from each row and column, this time with a minus sign. So another way of seeing that this is the actually equal to the determinant of this matrix, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3, is to think in terms of expanding this matrix along the first row. So another way of thinking about the determinant is to say that it's a1 times this 2x2 two two determinant minus A2 times this 2x2 two two determinant plus A3 times this 2x2 two two determinant. So here we have A1 times this 2x2 two two determinant, you can see that right there, plus A2 times this 2x2 two two determinant. And that means it's the same as minus A2 times this 2x2 two two determinant the one that you get by eliminating the row and the column through A2. And this entry here is A3 times this 2 by 2 determinant. So if you know the expansion of a determinant along the first row, you could go right from this step here and recognize after you've changed the sign here and changed the order of those two that you're getting the determinant of this matrix. And another way of writing the determinant is just as we've done up there, with absolute value signs. Alright, so this is actually a very important problem, because if you want to compute uh, the volume of, say, uh, a box formed by three vectors, the simplest way of doing it is to write those three vectors as rows of a matrix and take the determinant of that matrix. And you get the volume of that parallel pipe and formed by the three vectors.